ask, as somebody who's studied it again and again, back to front, is it fact? Is anything in there historical fact? Uh, very little, probably. Um, I think one important thing to bear in mind is that ancient writers had a very different understanding of what fact or fiction was from, from us today. Um, it wasn't written to be a factual account of the past. I don't think that's the way in which these biblical writers understood the past. Um, but as a historian of, of the Bible, I think there's very little that's factual. King David? No. Moses? No. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said Jesus behind me. I don't think it, they were taking the Lord's name in vain. No, Jesus, um, yeah. most scholars would agree that he existed, yeah. 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 Uh, so, uh, a hodgepodge of writings by different writers, scribes at different times with different agendas. Absolutely, and, and a hodgepodge is like not doing it a great service. I mean, this is a very sophisticated collection of ancient literature. I mean, it's fantastic stuff. It really is. Mm. Lots of different genres, lots of different sorts of traditions that are, that are being adopted and adapted and then readapted um, by successive writers. These are very creative people that were producing these texts. It's, it's brilliant stuff. But the, the, the sum of it, was it put together somewhat arbitrarily? That's the point I mean by, by hodgepodge over the years, for, for a purpose. I mean, the, the books that are there, why those books? Why not very, other books? Very few of the biblical books were written to be included in a Bible. Yeah. That's quite a late idea, late from my perspective as a, as a yeah. historian. Um, <laughs> yeah, so they weren't necessarily written to be included in a Bible. Um, these are religious writings. Some of them got into the Bible, some of them didn't, as we know. Um, the choices that were made as to what should be contained in this collection, I mean, it, it's very hard to say. Some things were obviously more appropriate, the, the collectors felt, than others. Bishop Michael. Yes, I mean, I, I agree with Francesca that there are many different genres in the Bible. There are, you know, there's obviously poetry in the Bible, mm. there are proverbs, uh, but there's also history. I mean, take, for instance, uh, the sudden appearance in archaeological evidence of the rather crude dwellings of the Israelites superimposed on the rather sophisticated dwellings of the Canaanites. The sudden d disappearance of the cults that Francesca is so interested in of Asherah and Baal. Uh, why did these things happen? Because something historical had happened. Another people had come into the land and supplanted those who had already been there. Well, that's historical. But archaeologically, uh, it's, it's very difficult to tell a Canaanite from an Israelite. Well, archaeologically, I'm just pointing out the differences. The, the crude uh, housing that the Israelites, as former nomadic people, had used. Uh, the, the fact that these cultic uh, shrines suddenly stopped being built. I mean, something was happening. And we have to give an account of what was happening. But if most of it didn't happen, why should we pay most of it? But it did happen, you see. Well, Noah's Ark? Well, I'm, I'm talking about what happened in Canaan. Um, I'm not saying that everything in the Bible is, is historical, because clearly it isn't. I mean, there's saga, there's poetry, mm. there are proverbs, there is wisdom. Uh, but there is also material that is historical. I mean, the writing prophets, for instance, uh, bear witness to contemporary events that were happening all around them. Now, you may have a different interpretation of those events. The, their enemies at that time certainly did. Mm -hmm. And quite a lot of what we know about Israel, actually, we know from their enemies. Mm -hmm. What the conquering kings and those passing through the armies, uh, what they tell us. Uh, their accounts may be different, but they're witnessing to the same sorts of peoples and events that were going on. I think this kind of radical skepticism is unwarranted. Radical scepticism. Yeah, I get that quite a lot. Um, I bet you do, yeah. I think... <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's important to point out that what you might perceive as radical scepticism actually is, is all about debates that we've been having in academia for a long well, time. Uh, I'm not which, which academia? Albright, John Bright, G.E. Wright? Well, which it, which academia been, are we talking about? Kathleen Kenyon? A long time. Well, well that doesn't make their work irrelevant. I mean, being no, dead doesn't make not. academics irrelevant. It, it does make it outdated in terms of the ways in which academia engages with other branches and other disciplines I which see. help us to understand. This is just sensationalism. I mean, most mainstream archaeology would accept that there is a historical basis to what 
there is of history in the Bible. As I say, not everything in the Bible is history. I didn't say there was no history. Well, you said hardly any facts. I said you... hardly any facts, exactly. <laughs> I think the point remains is that, of course, there are some things in the Bible that broadly happened. I'm the exile very glad you, of the very people to Babylon. So. <laughs> <laughs> but How just generous. Because, but just, and equally, just as you said, there's a lot that is... Isn't but even you say, this, you say so, that you say that in fact the Psalms are mm. about uh, somebody's mm. emotional uh, and religious state. The pr proverbs are about wisdom. Uh, I mean, there are different sorts of the Song so of Solomon you, how do you that know Professor whether Dawkins likes. to read likes something of, as history or the, something as not history in well, the Bible. the Book of Kings or uh, the, the Chronicles or Ezra and Nehemiah. I mean, uh, the writing prophets that I've mentioned. Uh, I mean, there are historical things in them that need to be investigated and interpreted. Well, the book of Isaiah has material that stretches over several centuries. Of course it does. And it only has the well, name of one prophet. Yes, but that's, his, that's a historical point. Can I, can I just, just move it on from you two? Fascinating as it is to, 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 to hear this as <laughs> historical. I, R Rabbi Laura, no Moses, no David, they don't exist. This undermines Judaism. Well, I, it doesn't undermine anything as I'm listening to you. I have a completely different take on what fact is and what my approach is to the Bible, that when I look at the Bible, I'm not, I'm not an archaeologist or historian in that way. I'm looking at it as a teacher, as a theologian, and for me, it has truth. It has truth that changes my life. Yeah. It has truth that I think affects other people's lives. It has things that I love. It has things that I can't stand. And I'm entering that debate. So the fact of what was, whether there was Babylonian, whether there was David or Moses, there's lots of information that says, or Scholars who say there was Moses and why it might have been with a different and slightly different name, but I'm not entering that for So it doesn't need to be historically true because there is truth in it. There's a greater truth. A completely truth. different yeah. kind of truth. Yeah. So Richard, I mean, it's similarly, there are, there are great truths in the Greek fables, aren't there, of, of mythology. It doesn't need to be true for us to derive um, truth from it. The world is full of origin myths and creation myths and myths of all kinds, and many of them are very beautiful. But what worries me about the Bible is that it has acquired in our civilization an enormous privileged position. I mean, everybody knows something about the Greek myths and the, and the Valhalla myths and so on, and some other myths as well. Mm. And they are interesting and they're treated as interesting myths. But the Bible myths are given a special privileged treatment. I mean, they are, uh, they're regarded as somehow set off on one side away from all these other myths. No doubt you'll find truths in the other myths. You'll find some truths of that kind in Australian yes, Aboriginal myths. Yes, although I'm looking for God. Well, which God? I mean, why not Jupiter? Why not Zeus? Why not, why not Thor? Yes, I... I think that... Let's let me just stay over here, yes. just let the, hear, hear, hear Richard out. Yeah, go on. Well, I, uh, that's about it, really. I mean, I, I, I object to the way... <laughs> I hope there's more to come from <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, was, I was simply objecting yeah. to the way the Judeo-Christian myth has permeated our society to such an enormous extent as though somehow it has special truths which are not to be found in, in other myths. And I don't think there's much truth to be found in any myths, as a matter of fact, but there, certainly there's no reason why the Judeo-Christian myth should be given this privileged status. And as for it not being literally true, of course, sophisticated theologians and historians don't think it's literally true, but 40%, 45% of the American people believe literally in Adam and Eve, believe literally that the world is only 6,000 years old. Mm. I mean, that's a shocking figure, and mm. you can't duck out of it by saying, oh, sophisticated theologians mm -hmm. don't, don't believe it. Unfortunately, what sophisticated theologians believe isn't really relevant to what the majority of Christians do believe. Um, you, Chris, I think, uh, Richard, Hugh Chris from the Evangelical Alliance, if I may, because <laughs> you believe it's all true, don't you? I so, do, yeah. So you believe that, um, you know, Adam and Eve and, and, and Noah's Ark, you believe, to just take something, Genesis 19.5, two angels came to, to Lot's uh, house in uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, and he was the only uh, righteous man in the village, and uh, the locals wanted to, to know the angels, they wanted to homosexually rape the angels, so Lot offered his virgin daughters instead <laughs> as an appeasement. Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was, was demolished uh, after that and his wife um, turned into a block of salt when she looked back. I take you believe that happened? I take my cues from Jesus who we've already agreed. Yes, so, uh, do you, did that accurate. happen? 
Uh, I believe that I Jesus know. believed the Old Testament to be historically accurate. Do you believe that that happened? I believe it happened because Jesus did. 